Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tim Jones. I work in epidemiology and health economics at NIHR ArcWest and I'll be talking broadly about the need to focus health spending on procedures that work well and specifically about a surgery for chronic shoulder pain called subacromial decompression. The objectives of this study were to explore trends in the use of subacromial decompression surgery in England and other countries, um, to explore variation in the use of the procedure in different parts of England, uh, estimate the amount spent on subacromial decompression in England in recent years, and review the literature on the effectiveness of subacromial decompression surgery. NHS spending per person in England has generally been increasing over time. However, we have a growing and ageing population and more and more expensive treatments all the time. To get the best healthcare for the population for our money, it makes sense to do less of things which aren't very effective in order to do more of the things that are effective. One possible way to identify when there may not be a clear consensus about using a clinical procedure is to explore variation in its use over time or in different locations. Some of this variation may be due to different demographics or clinical need, but many of those things can be adjusted for in our analysis. Will Hollingworth and colleagues previously reported on variation in use of hospital procedures. The figure on the top right shows some procedures with little variation uh, to the right of the figure. One example of these is removal of a kidney and presumably uh, when you need to remove a kidney there aren't many other possible options. Other procedures on the left of the figure show more variation between different areas after adjusting for demographics. This could indicate a clinical uncertainty in how to treat these conditions. One hospital procedure with quite high usage and a reasonable amount of variation is subacromial decompression. This is an operation to remove a bony spur on the shoulder blade to relieve pain and improve shoulder function. It's usually done as a keyhole procedure under general anaesthetic. We wanted to explore the use and cost of subacromial decompression over time and check the evidence for its use. We used hospital admissions data for England, adjusting for age, sex and deprivation. We linked healthcare resource group codes to payment by results tariffs to estimate costs. There have been several randomised trials and other studies of subacromial decompression since the 1990s, um, but systematic reviews suggest that many of these were at high risk of bias. However, there, there were two recent multi-centre placebo-controlled trials called FIMPACT in Finland and Seesaw in England, published in 2018 and both of these trials were considered to be at low risk of bias. Both trials suggested there was no clinically important difference between subacromial decompression surgery and placebo surgery. Here we see the trends in use of subacromial decompression over time for England in black and other countries in the coloured lines. The coloured lines stop abruptly because this is the end of the data we have, not because they stopped doing the procedure. There's generally an increase over time. In Finland, there is some reduction during the time of recruitment to FIMPACT. And in England, a plateau then reduction after recruitment to Seesaw. Although we haven't demonstrated a direct association between the decreasing use of the procedure and the trials. 
Over the 10 years from 2007-8 to 2016-17, England spent around £1 billion on subacromial decompression. Here we see variation in the use of subacromial decompression in England in 2016-17 and 2018-19. Despite decreased use of the procedure overall during those two years, the amount of variation is still similar. During 2018, NHS England ran a consultation about 17 different procedures, including subacromial decompression. They decided, based on recent evidence, to reduce use of subacromial decompression from 1st of April 2019. While we don't have any recent data, we could see that use of the procedure was already dropping in the years before 1st of April 2019. In conclusion, NHS England has carried out a lot of subacromial decompression procedures at considerable cost with little clear evidence that it is effective or cost effective, although it may still be useful in specific circumstances. A recommendation might be to fund high quality randomised controlled trials earlier. Despite their high cost to run, this may still be much cheaper and better for patients than carrying out many procedures unnecessarily. There are methods to help carry out high quality trials, such as Quintet, a qualitative intervention to help with recruitment to complex trials, and the ideal collaboration, an international group with various specialties aiming to improve quality research in surgery. NIHR ArcWest and the University of Bristol aim to develop robust processes to identify and reduce the use of ineffective procedures. Thank you all for your interest in this topic. You can leave questions and comments below the video. Thanks also to my co-authors. Uh, you can find a link to our BMJ Open paper on this slide.